I got fired. I <laughs> drugs, drug issues. Uh, they kind of stuck with me the whole my my whole career up until nine months ago, and uh, I mean I. I got fired from there. They sent me to rehab a couple of times. It just didn't click. I was young and dumb and thought I could, you know, do whatever I wanted to, thought I was invincible. And so they sent me home and released me. And uh, then, you know, a couple of years later, I got hired with TNA and I had a good run with them, but then drugs came in, you know, and, and I was on drugs all the time. It just, sometimes it would get out of hand. And sometimes I, I guess I was a functioning addict, you know, and that's, uh, that's still an addict either way. So, you know, drugs plagued me throughout my whole career. And it's sad because I know I cheated myself. Uh, <laughs> I went to the top of the mountain and it was beautiful from up there. But I honestly feel like I could have gone further. Uh, so I cheated the fans and I cheated myself. Uh, and I can't, I don't lose sleep at that about that uh, at night because I can't change any of that. All I can do is go from right here today and do the next right thing and do what's right for for Brian and for my wife Tracy and my children and and you know I'll use all that stuff as tackling fuel as Bobby Boucher would say uh, to not screw up again but I wish I would have come to this realization about uh, 15 16 years ago you know right before the big outlaws run but uh, you know we're both new and improved man we're a little older but that's also means we're a little wiser and I think the uh, the New Age Outlaw bracelets are on sale, <laughs> and uh, you know we've, we've rekindled a flame in us where we're where we're interested again. So I think the fans will find us interesting again, you know. And that's a and that's a cool point in our in our lives, you know. Uh, people, a lot of people go, oh yeah, he's just an old redneck wrestler working the indie circuit. But the indie circuit is where everybody started, man, and it's cool. We got when we go to shows at night. Uh, on the weekends, about every weekend, we've stayed really busy since we both got sober and kind of focused on, you know, trying to make a living at this. Uh, we go every night and we see young guys that, that wish they could be where we've been and we have the opportunity to maybe help them a little bit. Uh, maybe maybe they're, they were fans of ours, you know, so we get the opportunity to meet people up close and personal. Well, indie shows are a lot more personable than just walking out there and seeing a sea of people that you never, you never meet, you never see any of them, you never hear their stories about running into you at the airport and so and so and such and such years ago. So it's it's a cool deal. I think we're both, I speak for me, but I kind of speak for him too. I think we're both in a really good place, uh, not just career-wise, but in our own, inside ourselves, you know. And that's something that I couldn't say for myself no matter how fat my wallet was. I was never cool with, with being in Brian's head. It was a dangerous place to be, you know. And so we're, we're doing great, man. And I know you didn't ask that, but hey, I'm, I'm <laughs> spreading the good news, bro, if you ain't down with that. Yeah. And that's the same thing that he said earlier. It's, it's you know, you have regrets about what you did because I blasted Hunter. I mean, I blasted him every single chance I could, you know, and and, and that was, was me trying to not, you know, the attic in me was going, don't take the blame for this. You got released because, you know, you're too good. And, you know, that's what I was telling myself. I'm too good. I'm too good to work there. <laughs> I, I got to start my own company because... I'm too good. I have too much talent. They don't know what to do with me, so they're going to let me go. No, they let me go because I was a liability because they don't want me, you know, find me in a hotel room somewhere because that's where it was headed, yeah. you know. So, but, it, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just we're having fun at these shows. We, we get, like he said, you get to, like, I'll walk and run around and he starts <laughs> laughing because I will literally go out of the curtain and run through the fans, and everybody knows that knows me that I can't breathe anyway, so definitely by the time I get to the ring, I can't breathe. But run through the people, stand in the people, go through the bleachers, go through here, go through, and he just stand there, Billy Gunn, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are having fun. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's what we were about in the from the inception of the New Age Outlaws was, hey, we're going to have a good time. And you guys are welcome to come along. If you don't want to, then we got two words for you. You know, yeah. that's just was the idea. It stopped being fun after a little while, and that was because of the drugs. It started being hard work to stay screwed up all the time, for one thing. But yeah, in TNA, we had good gigs. It was stable. It was paycheck every two weeks. It was, but it wasn't any fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. We really, and I appreciate the opportunities that were given to us by TNA. I got a lot of great friends there. Uh, but that doesn't mean I had a good time while I was there. You know, in myself, I didn't have a good time. Now we're having fun again, and I think that'll come off.